And Call of Duty War, how are you gonna do? You sold out, you completely sold out. One million copies sold day one. One million copies sold day one. How, how has this happened? And it's happened again. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Spiffing Brit, and today, welcome to the wonderful world of Tech Corp, a game which is all about mass producing bits of technology, be they games, consoles, phones, you name it, you can do it. But today we're going to be playing the game in a way the developers absolutely never intended, by throwing all of that boring factory production-y side of things out of the window and instead becoming multi-multi-millionaires by adopting the perfectly balanced business strategies of everyone's favourite game developers, EA. I mean, who doesn't love this wonderful, wholesome game development company that just cares about happiness and video games and, of course, the players? Oh, dear, oh, dear. Poor EA. <laughs> and you know what, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. That's right, it's sponsored ad read time. Those lovely sausages over at Infinite Lagrange back to sponsor a second video I know. Infinite Lagrange is a sci-fi grand space simulation game, oh my goodness, where players are sent into an unknown galaxy to explore, build up a gigantic base, harvest resources and cause economic collapses, and heck, maybe join some guilds, make some friends, or just murder each other. The choice is yours. It's a very fun spacey game, and personally I've been playing it since its launch a few weeks back. The game has a very beautiful grand strategy setting, allowing you to interact with many NPC factions and other players factions in the universe or just go out and explore do whatever you like but why am i here showcasing you the game well they've just had a fantastic update the incursion from privateer update is now live what's a privateer well here's a boy floating around in space who believes everything you own should be owned by him you can join the fight and try and destroy the privateers take over their strongholds you name it you can even customize your own fleets to do so so why not go join the fight against the privateers or maybe recruit them to fight for you the choice is yours anyway ladies and gentlemen if you want to give this a try yourself hop on down to the description or the comment section there's a link to this wonderful free mobile game you can even follow it on its own discord facebook page you name it the choice is yours anyway thank you very much for the money developers onwards with our mass production of call of duty now today we're going to be starting a brand new game following along all of the wonderful businessy strategies of the very dubious and potentially evil ea games although because i'm not allowed to put spaces in it's just ea games All right we're going to start a brand new game with the sandbox mode and naturally we need to find a location to actually start our wonderful business operation. As you can see, we have all of these wonderful places in the world like Europe, but naturally we're going to the location where people are most susceptible to the DLC practices of EA, which is of course America. Now we've so far already spent $30,000 on just a whole bunch of TVs and a desk, so it's probably time that we actually hire ourselves someone. So we're going to hire our only employee. We only need a single employee. Do they need to be good? No. We are going to get the worst least effective employees in the universe. Because honestly, you don't need to be good or even have a moral compass to work at EA. Consequently, we've found our employee. Rachel Smith here is 31 years old. She has a negotiation score of 10, a sales score of 8, and a productivity score of 1, making her probably statistically the worst possible employee we could ever find. You're hired. Now that she's hired, we can actually assign her to her desk, you know, if we can actually click on it. Come on, let me get, let me get to the desk, please. I'm gonna have to move a TV out the way, aren't there we go, fantastic. Right, we'll assign Rachel Smith to this desk. Now, Rachel Smith is sat in this absolutely horrible abyss, but she has one very important job for us, and that job is to make video games without spending money. Now, you might be thinking, hang on a second, how can one single sales executive make games without spending money? Well, it's very simple. You outsource everything to dodgy companies, ask no questions, pay them no money, and for some reason, video games are made. So, we're going to begin. Rachel Rachel Smith, instead of searching for contracts to do, is going to start to search for game studios. And she's going to start expelling some of her energy trying to find game studios. And here's our first one, Omnivorous Ant, a game studio with just three employees currently available for sale. In total, they cost $22,000 to purchase, meaning this entire development studio costs less than all of these fridges and TVs I own. Naturally, we're going to buy them. And so Omnivorous Ant is going to be the first studio purchased by EA. They only cost $22,000 grand to purchase and that is all they're ever going to cost us. It's perfect. So what do you do when you have one game developing studio under your belt? Well it's only natural that you actually make your first video game and we're going to give this video game to Omnivorous Ant to make. Anyway we're going to create our first video game. It's going to naturally be the greatest game of all time, Fallout 76, an RPG post-apocalypse game of a brand new franchise. Many of you think this is part of the Fallout universe when in actuality this is part of the Todd Howard Lies canon. 
many of you would say that Fallout 76 is in fact an online game, and no, it is not. Now, when it comes to actually creating your game, games cost money. If we increase the budget, it's going to cost us money to produce this game. We're going to be giving that money to our game studio to create it. But remember, we purchased this game studio for 22 grand, and the free employees of this game studio are unpaid child laborers probably located somewhere in Florida. Consequently, we crank the budget down to zero. That's right, we're not spending anything on this game. And what are we going to do? Well, we're just going to say that we're going to launch this bad boy in 70 days. This studio is going to try and create Fallout 76 in just 70 days. What's the story? Well, it's going to be an alternative history game. How long is the campaign going to be? There isn't even a campaign, so we're just going to say 10 hours. Side missions? <laughs> Exploration, just look at the map, I guess. Sound design, our MIDI soundtrack. Gameplay, all about running and gunning. AI, Bethesda games and AI. This is not a combination. Basic AI, my friend. And what's the environment going to be? It's going to be a wasteland, a beautiful open world. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Now we just need to create our logo. That's right, we actually have to create a logo for this game. Yes, perfect. The layering on everything. This one just reads, Bod Howard V Poo Buff that's all I see. Perfect, this is our game. Right, save. Fantastic. Now, immediately, game development's gonna get underway. The lovely sausages over at our game studio are now going to start working on Fallout 76, the greatest video game of all time. Look at them get to work on it. This is fantastic. They're already hurrying through development at a fantastic rate. And look at this, we've got more game studios we can purchase. So we're gonna buy Sad Game Studios uh, for only 18K. They seem perfect. We're going to buy this studio as well. Fantastic. And oh my goodness, Best Games Incorporated, lovely, don't mind if I do. So we've picked up all of these wonderful studios. Oh my goodness, the time has come. Omnivorous Anta asking for a marketing budget for Todd Howard Lies Fallout 76. Uh, this is fantastic because, you know, the game's in development, but what's more important than making a good game and spending money on the game? It's marketing that game. So we're going to say, hey, we're going to assign 31k to advertise Fallout 76. We're going to set the sell price to $40 because people are insane. And this now means we're spending 30000 dollars marketing a game that cost us zero dollars to make. So bam, the marketing shall begin, and actually we're going to start producing our next game. Sad Game Studio is going to create our next game. It's going to be an RPG, post-apocalyptic survival game set in the Todd Howard Lies franchise, and is of course going to be none other than the Horse Armor DLC. Perfect. Story, you know, it's going to be a basic story. Campaign, 10 hours. Side missions, just collection. Sound design, absolutely nothing. It's a piece of horse armor. Gameplay style, hardcore. Only hardcore people buy the Horse Armor DLC. Perfect stuff. Right, fantastic. It's horse armor DLC time. We're just going to put this crying looking man in because, you know, this is what it feels like to actually buy the horse armor DLC. So perfect. The next addition to the Fallout franchise is ready. It's horse armor DLC. Now, we do run into an issue when it comes to actually marketing Fallout 76, and that is that we don't actually have anyone in marketing. So it's time for EA to actually start hiring employees. Now, remember, we only have one employee whose entire job it is, is to find game studios for us to purchase. Next up, we're going to actually need to find people to sell our garbage games. So once again, we're just going to find the worst possible people at marketing that money can buy. In fact, you know, we'll just hire the first one. Perfect marketing score of 10. You'll do, Mary Jones. All right, Mary is now hired. What's Mary's job? Advertising our terrible games. Go on, sell Fallout 76 to people, Mary. You've got 30 grand to spend, and she's spending it with speed. And fantastic, it looks like we now need to actually start producing physical copies for Fallout 76. Now, it does cost us a lot of money to make physical copies. Already 348 people have pre-ordered the amazing Fallout 76, so we're going to produce a humble 35,000 units. This is going to cost us half a million, but trust me, it's going to be worth it. So we order that, and don't worry, the game will be ready to sell soon. Oh, and fantastic, Fallout 76 has just released. So far, we have sold zero units. How is it doing? Oh, it's just selling units, fantastic. 3,000 copies have been sold. Make that 5,000. We've still got a decent bit in stock. The only way we can make a lot on this is if we've printed more units than we end up selling, which actually looks like it's possible. Oh, beans. Because this game cost us nothing to make. Absolutely nothing beyond the marketing. And oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, we're gonna make a loss on it. Fallout, why is no one buying Fallout 76? There's so much spare stock lying around. Oh dear. Right, now we also need to start creating horse armor DLCs. So naturally, we're just going to print 4,000 units of that because I don't think it's gonna sell very well considering that Fallout 76 only 
sold 6,000 copies. Ladies and gentlemen, have I got a fantastic offer for you. Thanks to the incredible success of Fallout 76's launch, we have loads of spare games to give away. Consequently, the first 14,000 people to like this video will receive their very own partially functioning copy of Fallout 76. The $80 horse armor DLC is not included, and there are absolutely no refunds. Anyway, it's time for the horse armor DLC to release. How does the horse armor DLC do, my friend? We've ran out of copies for the horse armor DLC. Incredible stuff. I want 25k more units of horse armor DLC. I swear if the horse armor DLC sells more copies than the original game, we're onto something. It has. Horse armor DLC is now sold more than three times the copy of Fallout 76. Oh no, no. Horse armor DLC has made us 1.4 million in profit. What is this? It's an $80 horse armor DLC. It's doing so well. <laughs> A few moments later. We've just simultaneously commissioned four absolutely identical games. Call of Duty 1, Call of Duty 2, War Crime Time, Call of Duty 3, Evil Russians, where we have a slight spin and actually change the background of the game, and Call of Duty 4, USA Good. Now, all of these games are absolutely identical. Want to know how we make a Call of Duty? Sure, here's how we do it. You go into here, select one of your random game studios, crank the budget down to zero, select just the exact same genre we've been using this entire time, select Call of Duty, and you just name it something along the lines of Call of Duty 5 Bravo Ops Ultra, the most Call of Duty sounding game imaginable. Wabam, release it. Story, basic. Just pick the first option for everything, okay? That's all the developers do. You know, you just copy and paste the preset in from the last game. Perfect. Always pick the same default guy, same background, and release. It's fantastic. This is how we make Call of Duty. Oh wait, Call of Duty 1's about to release. Let's set ourselves the marketing budget. Firstly, crank the game up to $80, give it a basic marketing budget of 27 grand, and don't worry, it'll make its money back. Everything will be fine. <laughs> now, Call of Duty 5 Bravo Ops Ultra is going to be our magnum opus, and consequently, we're going to give it a marketing budget of $1 million, because I, for some reason, believe we can make all of that money back. Although I don't actually think we could even be able to complete the marketing campaign by the time the game releases. <laughs> anyway, it's time for us to make copies for Call of Duty 1. Uh, we're going to make a simple 22,000 copies, I think. There we go. Hopefully, we get our money back. Anyway, Call of Duty 2 also needs the same, so I'm going to give it 24,000 copies. Call of Duty 5 already has 5,500 pre-orders. Considering it's selling for $80, this game has made us 440,000 already. Right, Call of Duty 4 USA, good. This bad boy can have 20,000 copies as well. And you know what? I realize we are actually probably going to need to hire ourselves another marketing expert. So we'll bam, one more marketer hired. Right, Call of Duty 1, how much money do you make us? Oh, it's already turned a profit. There we go, 5,000 sales already. Lovely stuff. Once again, we're not delaying the games, guys. Just release the games as they are. It's fine. Release Call of Duty 2 War Crime Time. It's the world's ready for it. And finally, oh yes, let's make copies for Call of Duty 5 Bravo Ops Ultra. This is going to be our magnum opus. We spent a million dollars marketing it. Let's get 60k units ordered. <laughs> Look at the pre-orders going up. Look at that. Oh, we're going to make some money off of this bad boy. Anyway, Call of Duty 3 is just released. We actually need to order some units for Call of Duty 3 because all of the units have sold. Oh my god, it's already made us 1.6 million. Oh, Call of Duty Free Evil Russians. You're an absolutely perfect game. Right, another 20,000 units. Let's go. Let's sell those units. It's already sold. But Evil Russians is doing fantastic. It's already sold out of even more copies. Right, give me another 30,000 copies. This game has made us 3 million. How's Call of Duty 2 doing? Call of Duty 2 is fine. Call of Duty 1 hardly sold, but that was to be expected. Call of Duty 2, which was an exact duplicate, just with slightly more marketing, has made almost three times the profit. And then Call of Duty Free with even more more marketing has just made us insane quantities of money. It is still selling. Right, let's order 81,000 more units. This game is doing great. How's Call of Duty 4 doing? USA Good is doing terribly. Um, who knows why? It's not my fault. Call of Duty 3 is sold out once again. How's it even doing this? It's made us $10 million. Right, 70k more units ordered. Bam. Call of Duty 3, you ridiculous game. You absolute nightmare of a video game. It sold over 170,000 copies. Oh my goodness. The pre-orders are large than the units we have in stock. Oh no, what have I done? Oh no. Okay, day one release for this game is going to be insane. Call of Duty 5 Bravo Ops, what are you gonna do? It's release day. Already every single physical copy is sold out. We need to sell more. We've already turned 2.9 million in profit. Oh my goodness. Right, well, let's just make another 95,000 physical units. Maybe it sells them all. Maybe it doesn't. It doesn't matter. And we've run out of copies already. Okay, right, we need more units then 150,000 units let's go and it's sold out again okay right fine 
273,000 units. That's never going to sell out. That's never going to sell out. It's sold out. Call of Duty 5 Bravo Ops. How are you doing this? Fine. Okay, fine. Putting my foot down. 1 million units. It costs us so much money to make this. There is no way it sells out. Absolutely no way. There we go. Fantastic. Oh, it's petering off. Oh, oh my goodness. It, we, we've made almost 100 million. We've made 100 million. 1.5 million units sold. It is the exact carbon copy as all of these other games. 1.5 million copies sold. This is fantastic. This is absolutely amazing. And it just proves the power of marketing. It's all you need. You know, we're going to upgrade our office because why not? You know, we have so much money. Only costs us 500,000. That's just like a couple of Call of Duties. You know, that's fine. Can we even upgrade again? Of course we can. Let's upgrade even further. 1.2 million to upgrade. No problem. No more upgrades available. Fine. This is what peak performance looks like. Let us slam down our desks for our lovely marketing department to work with. The marketing department has now grown. It is now time for us to create even more Call of Duties. I like how we can set a budget of 131 million if we really wanted to, but in reality, why? You know what? I'm feeling generous for this next one. We will give it a budget of... Is this the lowest amount I can do? 300,000 is the lowest I can do. I'd like even less than that if I'm being honest. But fine. This shall be Call of Duty War. It's going to take us 30 days to make and we're just going to release it. Once again, default everything. I'm not even going to change the logo. This is fine. Bam. Get that out. Next game. Once again, another Call of Duty game. This time, no budget. What's the game? It's going to be Call of Duty War War. Once again, Again, identical game, 10 hour campaign, just of questing, running and gunning, terrible AI, basically no controls, for some reason a horde mode, this one I accidentally clicked on pixel art and there's no going back now, so bam, this one's out, released, perfect. Next game, straight away, zero budget, this is going to be Call of Duty War War War, our next game in the franchise, it's going to be very similar to the last one, in fact it's going to be entirely an exact copy of the last one, although I've accidentally slipped a bit and now we actually have default AI in instead of basic AI. Right, that's Call of Duty War War War. What comes after that? You guessed it, it's another Call of Duty. Oh, but first, we need to set the marketing budget for Call of Duty War. It's gonna sell at $80. It's gonna have a marketing budget of 1 million because that's just how it works. Next game needs to be made. It's going to be Call of Duty War 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 War. Once again, no budget, 30 day launch, and let's just default everything again. Perfect. Can I actually just release two games of the exact same name? Why not? So this is just gonna be Call of Duty War, despite the fact that there is already a Call of Duty War just because I hate my fans and I want them to be confused and buy multiple games. And it's perfect. There we go. And so we now have five Call of Duties all in the works, all ready to release. All of them soon to be given a marketing budget. Call of Duty War War, once again, maximum price, maximum marketing budget. Call of Duty War has already managed to somehow gain 120,000 pre-orders, meaning this game has already made us just under 10 million in profits. Oh, and now it's time for the next game to have its price set. This is Call of Duty War War War. Things are looking good. Okay, now this is Call of Duty War 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 War. Uh, once again, one million and eighty dollars. We've got more pre-orders on this one actually. And how's this one doing? Hundred thousand pre-orders on Call of Duty War War War. Oh my goodness, that's incredible. That means we basically sold twelve million copies already, meaning we're getting our money back. Right now, I need to actually start making physical copies for Call of Duty War. So, seeing as the last games have sold quite well, we're going to just default and order one million copies right out the gate because we can probably sell maybe close to 1 million copies. Yes, the game's going to be 50% free development. Who cares? In fact, we're just going to get 1 million copies on all of these because, you know, we might make our money back. And the final marketing campaign for Call of Duty War, 150,000 people convinced to buy this. This is incredible. This is how many people we can get to just pre-order our games. Lovely stuff, right? Let's get ready to release them to the wider world. The release of Call of Duty War. Here it goes. Let's make some money, ladies and gentlemen. At Call of Duty War, how are you going to do? You sold out. You completely sold out. One million copies sold day one. One million copies sold day one. How? How has this happened? And it's happened again. Immediately two million copies sold. Right, another order. Order more. Order more. We can only produce one million copies a day. It's sold out. More. <laughs> Just produce more. Call of Duty War sold seven million copies. All we did was give this game a budget and for some reason it's selling. It makes no sense. Is, is, is this what happens when you create a game with a budget more than zero dollars? I mean, I say create a game. We didn't really create a game. We mostly half finished a tech demo and just threw it out into the public. Oh my goodness, we're about to make 1 billion. That's it. We made 1 billion. Call of Duty War has made 1 
one billion dollars in profit and we've sold out again order more just order more the world for some reason needs call of duty war you know whilst this game is doing so well we might as well make the next one made by the exact same developers this time with a budget of you know what let's give them a budget of 500 million <laughs> i think this will probably be the largest budget video game of all time of course call of duty franchise name the game this is just going to be call of duty war 2 not to be confused with call of duty war or call of duty war the sequel to call of duty war this is going to be call of duty war 2 which is technically the sequel to a sequel but technically ignoring the sequel and just going back to the original it's going to be fantastic once again it's not going to be finished perfect all right this is it 30 million units sold if we sell another million units do you know what this means 31 million units sold meaning this is now the most sold call of duty of all time in reality the best-selling call of duty is call of duty black ops released in 2010 sold 30.7 million units we've just sold 31 million units and it's just still selling it's just not stopping this is insane this is absolutely insane call of duty war 2 is about to release and i'm gonna hazard a guess and say it's immediately run out of stock and who would have guessed oh my goodness what a mess what a mess there we go they ran out of copies again this is it just just even more just even more just keep making more copies oh my goodness right well um this game is no longer functional um i can't actually play this game anymore because of how much money we've made and just what it is doing you know i'm actually going to set up a macro that's going to do this all automatically for me yep then we can actually see just how many units of call of duty war 2 we actually managed to sell right i'll get that set up and back in a moment six and a half hours later right here we go we've now found the way to do it this is the perfect setup basically every second this action is repeated where we basically say yes we're going to order another one million units well it's not quite one million it's nine hundred thousand this is the most accurate i could get it to be and it's just going to keep doing this forever so i'm going to just leave my computer going and we'll see how many units we somehow managed to sell of the legendary call of duty war 2 and there we have it the game's crashed uh <laughs> that's it game crashed it lasts very long right let's see how many copies we sold well this is it ladies and gentlemen the point where the game dies um i think it's the point where we cross over and make 21 billion dollars and the game can't process it and so just crashes um in total call of duty war 2 managed to sell 250 million copies and technically it wouldn't stop because i looked into the background of this game and due to the way they stack modifiers this game would have continued to be sold until roughly about 14 billion copies has been sold basically everyone on the planet would love this game so much they'd buy it multiple times the game is incredibly broken and i love it and there you have it ladies and gentlemen this is how to be ea and become a multi-billionaire in the process anyway if you enjoyed today's video make sure to give it a like and heck why not hop on down to the comment section and pledge your undying support and pre-order call of duty war 2 2 the sequel to the greatest game in existence now with even less features than before but even more marketing and hey why not even consider subscribing i'd absolutely love to have you be a lovely member of this tea drinking community of game breaking shenanigans anyway as always a massive thank you to each and every one of our amazing patrons whose names can be seen on screen now these amazing people make all of these fantastic videos all the more possible seriously thank you very much and hey if you sat there wondering what video you'd like to see next well look no further than this one on screen now trust me you're gonna absolutely love it anyway i'll see each and every one of you in the next one have a lovely day and goodbye for now